ক্লিক করুন অ্যাপের বেল আইকনে আর সাবস্ক্রাইব করুন এবিপি আনন্দ সব সময় থাকুন খবরে प्रोग्राम ask you that uh, during this lockdown period uh, this lockdown period the students are getting bored saying at true, home but uh, this time is very important to prepare themselves uh, whenever they are staying at home so uh, what are the processes and uh, how should they prepare themselves man students of class 12 they should first revise the topics that they have learned in class 11 formulas of trigonometry uh, basic differentiation they whatever they have learned they should revise those topic and then from class 12 part they can begin with relation function because functions they have done in class 11 and then they can proceed to differentiation algebra this parts for students of class 11 i would suggest there are chapters like apgp trigonometry linear inequalities which they have done in class 10 they should start with those topics to revise at home and use this lockdown period for the benefit and so they can prepare their sense for the upcoming examinations uh sir uh, today our uh, chapter our topic is matrices so yes. what is the definition of matrix and what are the types and the vari- uh, variations yes ma'am first to define a matrix i would take help of something that all of you are very much familiar with first let us observe a school time table now all of us are familiar with the concept of the school time table slide please now if you look on the screen the school time table that you can see it is a rectangular arrangement the horizontal lines called rows and vertical lines called columns on the left side you get to see the days of the week is monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday and at the top you get to see the co- the periods written in a horizontal line now if you note that the intersection of the first row that is the row line related to monday and the first column there's the intersection of the first period that gives us the subject that is taught on monday in the first period now the horizontal line represents all the subjects that are taught on a particular day on the vertical lines represents all the subjects that are taught in the first period now if we refer say the second column that is marked by 2 and we choose wednesday the intersection of the row corresponding to wednesday mm-hmm. and the column corresponding to 2 will give us a subject that is taught on second period on wednesday now using this concept of a rectangular arrangement let us define what is a matrix next slide please now see what is the definition of a matrix a matrix is a rectangular arrangement or array of numbers symbols expressions arranged in rows and columns now three words it's an array of numbers symbols and expressions let's see an example capital a is a matrix whose elements are 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 now clearly these are numbers this is a matrix whose elements are all numbers the first horizontal line represents the first row the second horizontal line represents the second row the first vertical column represents the first column the second vertical column represents the second column and the third vertical column represents the third column over here so there are two rows and three columns now it is very important that when we write a matrix matrix is named using capital letters and we use either 
the first bracket like over here I'm writing 1, 2, 3, 4 or the third bracket like 1, 2, 3, 4 to denote a matrix. It is a very common error we see that students during the examination use this symbol. Now this symbol is incorrect. This is the symbol for a determinant. Be very careful when you are defining a matrix then you should use the correct symbol either this or this. The elements of a matrix are always written using small letters and the matrix itself is used, uh, is named using a capital letter. Now let us see a few more examples. B is another matrix where the elements are X, Y, Z and W. Now these are all symbols. C is another matrix whose elements are first element is x plus y, second element is x minus y, third x square plus y square and fourth x square minus y square. Now these are all mathematical expressions. So the first matrix is using numbers, the second matrix the elements are all symbols, the third matrix the elements are all mathematical expressions. So all these rectangular arrangement form a matrix. Now the concept of matrix is clear, let us define what is order of a matrix. Slide please. First, this last slide again. Now, order of a matrix. Now, order of a matrix is that if a matrix A consists of M rows and N columns, then the order of a matrix is M by N. Although we pronounce it as M by N, but when we write, write M cross N. So if we look at the first matrix, there are two rows and three columns, so order is 2 by 3. The second case, there are two rows and two columns, so order is 2 by 2. And the third matrix, there are two rows and two columns, so order is 2 by 2. So order of a matrix means first the number of rows followed by the number of Column. columns. So first comes the number of rows, then comes the number of columns. Now based on this concept of order, let us define what is a comparable matrix. Next slide please. Now comparable matrix is that if A is a matrix whose elements are 1, 2, 3 and 4 and B is a matrix whose elements are X, Y, Z and W, now two matrices having the same order are called comparable matrices. So order of A is 2 by 2 order of B is also 2 by 2, so A and B are comparable matrices. Now we define what is equal matrix, very important. Two matrices are said to be equal if and only if they are of the same order and their corresponding elements are equal. So let us define one more matrix C whose elements are 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now clearly in matrix A and matrix C we see they are of the same order. So first condition that they must be of the same order is satisfied. The second case is that all the elements 1, 1, 2 with 2, 3 with 3, 4 with 4, all the elements are equal. So A and B are equal matrices. Equality of matrix is a very important concept and we use it, we'll use it later today while solving a lot of questions. Let us now go to types of matrices. Now types of matrices are defined using the number of rows and number of columns present in a matrix. So let us see the first type that is a rectangular matrix. Now what is a rectangular matrix? A matrix which consists of m rows and n columns where m is not equal to n is called a rectangular matrix. So if A is a matrix, elements are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now clearly there are two rows and three columns. So order is 2 by 3. Because the number of rows is not equal to number of columns, it's a rectangular matrix. Also we see that the shape of such a matrix is rectangular and hence comes the name. Now we define a row matrix. A matrix consisting of 
only one row of elements, say one, two, three, is called a row matrix. So there is only one row and there are three columns. So if there is only one row and three columns, then such a matrix is called a row matrix. The order of such a matrix is one by three. Now we define a column matrix. As the name suggests, a column matrix is a matrix which consists of only one column. So suppose C is a matrix, the elements are X, Y, Z, there are three rows, R1, R2, R3 and one column, so order is 3 by 1. Next type is a null matrix, null matrix is very important mm -hmm. because null matrix is a matrix where all the elements are 0. Now, null matrix can be of any type, can be a rectangular matrix, a row matrix, column matrix, let's see. So it can be a column matrix, a row matrix, a square matrix, that is it can be a rectangular matrix, a column matrix, row matrix, square matrix, any. So if all the elements are 0, then such a matrix is a null matrix or a 0 matrix. Now we define a square matrix. A matrix which consists of equal number of row and column is called a square matrix. In case of a square matrix, as we know, a square, all sides are equal. In a matrix, if the number of rows is equal to the number of columns, such a matrix is a square matrix. So we define it this way, A11, A12, A21, A22. Clearly, there are two rows and two columns. Now, it is important to note why I have used this abbreviation is that A11 is the element where the intersection of the first row and the first column, A12, first row, second column, A21, second row, first column, and A22, second row, second column. So, the number Aij, I indicate the rowth position, J indicates the column position. Now, there are two rows and two columns. It gives the shape of a square and it's a square matrix. Now, in a square matrix, a very important property is this elements, A11, A22. Now, A11 is the element with the intersection of the first row, first column, A22 with the intersection of the second row and the second column. So, where I equals to J, that is row width and column position becomes equal, these are called diagonal elements. So, a11, A22 are diagonal elements of a square matrix. Now, the line passing through the diagonal element is called principal diagonal of a square matrix. Mm -hmm. Using this concept of principal diagonal and diagonal elements, we will now define what is a diagonal matrix. A diagonal matrix is a matrix in which all the non-diagonal elements must be 0. So, if I consider A is a matrix whose elements are 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 4, clearly other than the diagonal elements, all the other elements are 0. So, this is an example of a diagonal matrix. The last type is identity matrix. Now, in case of an identity matrix, all the principal diagonal elements must be 1 and all the non-diagonal elements must be 0. So, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, this is an example of an identity matrix. Clearly, all the diagonal elements are 1 and all the other elements are 0. Now, this is an identity matrix consisting of 3 row and 3 column. So, we call it identity matrix of order 3 and we denote it as I3. If we consider identity matrix of order 2, then the elements will be 1, 0, 0, 1. This is a 2 by 2 order matrix and it's called identity matrix of order 2. Hmm. So, uh, until now, so uh, let's have a small recap. Yes, uh, we have learned about uh, what is matrix, yes. what are the types, 
we have learned about the comparable matrix and the equal matrix and yes. up to now uh, the identity matrix so there is a question which arises like is an identity matrix also a diagonal matrix it's a very good question ma'am this is a question where students um, often feel that how to connect this to then let me make it clear that in case of a uh, identity matrix the diagonal elements are one and all the non diagonal elements are zero so an identity matrix clearly satisfies the definition of a diagonal matrix and hence we conclude that all identity matrices are diagonal matrices but the converse is not true that is if i look at a a is a diagonal matrix the elements are 2 3 and 4 so a is a diagonal matrix but it cannot be a Uh, identity matrix so we conclude all identity matrices are diagonal matrices but all hmm. diagonal matrices cannot be identity okay so uh, may i take a call because somebody yes. is waiting for us shayan mondol is waiting with his question yeah shan tell us yeah ma'am hello yeah we can hear you yeah ma'am my uh, question is what is the basic difference between a set and a matrix okay okay now a set is a collection of well defined objects well defined distinct objects so when we write a set it consists of elements see this is uh, the first four natural numbers the so set consists of first four natural number so it consists of elements 1 2 3 and 4 now this is in this arrangement we do not follow a rectangular pattern that is as many elements as there we are we write separating them by comma now there is no pattern to this arrangement however in case of a matrix there is a definite pattern that is the elements must be written using rows and columns in which every element has a specific position in the matrix whereas in a set if you note if i write 1 2 3 and 4 and if someone else writes say 3 2 1 4 it does not make much of a difference however if i write a matrix 1 2 3 and 4 and another matrix 1 3 2 and 4 these are completely different matrices so in matrix the position of the element is very important they have a definite position in the matrix but in case of a set that is not so also the arrangement there is a specific arrangement in a matrix but in a set there is no such arrangement okay now we define the operations on matrices first operation is addition hmm. two set say let us consider two matrices a and b of the same order very important all of you note that these two matrices must be of the same order if we take two matrices of different order addition is not possible so if a and b are two matrices of the same order then their sum a plus b is a matrix obtained by adding the corresponding elements of a and b so let us see an example capital a is a matrix whose elements are a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 B is a matrix elements are B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, and B6. Now A plus B. If you want to compute, first check the order: two row, three column, two row, three column. So the orders are equal. Hmm. Now we find their sum by adding the corresponding elements. So A1 will be added to B1. B1. So A1 plus B1, then A2 plus B2, A3 plus B3. A4 plus B4, A5 plus B5, A6 plus B6. So we are adding the corresponding elements, and note that the answer will be of the same order as that of A and B. The next operation that we will define is subtraction of matrices. Now let A and B be two matrices again of the same order. All the subtraction cannot be defined if the two matrices are of different order. Then their difference A minus B is the matrix obtained. by subtracting the elements of matrix b from the corresponding elements of matrix a so a minus b using the same matrices a and b a minus b is a1 minus b1 
a2 minus b2, a3 minus b3, a4 minus b4, a5 minus b5, a6 minus b6. So, we subtract all the corresponding elements a minus b. Next operation is multiplication of a matrix by a scalar. Now, if k is any scalar, what is a scalar? A scalar is any real number. If k is any scalar and a is any given matrix, then the matrix obtained by multiplying each element of a by k is called a scalar multiple of a. So, let us define the product. Using the same matrix a over here, if I choose a scalar k, then k into a is a matrix whose elements will be obtained by multiplying all these elements of a by k. So, the elements will be k a1, k into a2, k into a3, k into a4, k into a5, k into a6. Next operation is very important, that is multiplication of a matrix by another matrix. Now, in matrix, there are two types of multiplication. There is one is multiplication of a matrix by a scalar, and second is multiplication of a matrix by a matrix. Now, in this case, let us understand the conditions that is imposed. A is a matrix, and B is another matrix. The first question arises is, can we multiply any two matrices A and B? Then, if not, then what is the question? What is the condition based on which we can multiply? Now, to multiply two matrices A and B, the condition that we must check first is that the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. That is, if A is a matrix whose order is M by P and B is a matrix whose order is P by N, then the product AB will be defined because the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. If C is the product, then the i comma kth element of C will be obtained by the sum of the product of the elements of the ith row of A with the corresponding elements of the kth column of B. Let us understand this thoroughly using two examples. You can write down this question. If A is a matrix whose elements are, is a row matrix, elements are 1 and 2, and B is a matrix, elements are 3 and 4, find AB and B into A. Then find AB and B into A. So, let us first see order of A. There are there is only one row and two columns, order is 1 by 2. In B, there are two rows and one column, so order is 2 by 1. Clearly, this is 2 and this is 2, so the number of column of A is equal to number of rows of B, so we can define the product AB. Then A into B will be the product of the first into the second matrix. Now, how do we multiply? The rule is we multiply row elements of the first matrix with the column elements of the second. So, 1 into 3 plus 2 into 4. So, this is 3 plus 8. That means 11. Now, clearly note that the first in the first matrix, the number of row is 1, and in the second matrix, the number of column is 1. So, we have 1 by 1 cross 1, and so the order of the answer, that is the product AB, is also 1 by 1. Now, let's do the reverse, that is B into A. So, B is the first matrix, 3, 4, and A is the second matrix, that is 1 and 2. Let's check the order. Now, this is of order 2 by 1. This is of order 1 by 2. Clearly, 1 and 1 over here, so matrix multiplication is possible. Now, when we multiply, this is the first row and this is the first column. So, 3 into 1. Second row, first column, 4 into 1. First row, second column, 3 into 2. And then second row with second column, 4 into 2. So, the elements are 3, 4, 6, and 8. Clearly, this is of order 2 by 2. 
it matches with this and this over here. So we see that AB is not equal to BA. So in case of matrices, the product AB and the product BA are not equal. So we conclude that matrix multiplication is not commutative in general. Matrix multiplication is not commutative in general. Very important property of matrices. So now, sir, here a question arises, I think, that uh, is it possible to multiply any of the matrices? I think you have given the answer before. Um, when we multiply two matrices, mm -hmm. then we have to note that the number of the columns, columns and row. of and number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to number of row of the second, second matrix. matrix. If that is not so, then the matrix hmm. multiplication will not be possible. Okay. For example, if I consider a matrix over here, 1, 2, and 3, and another matrix, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if I'm if I check the order over here, there are three row hmm. and there is one column, order is three by one, hmm. and this is two by two. Clearly, this one and over here it is two, it doesn't match. Hmm. So, matrix multiplication for these two matrices is not possible. Okay. Mirudir Paur Piridam, lockdown in classroom. So, can you show us some uh, sums about this regarding this topic? Yes, ma'am. Now, we will solve questions on all the topics that we have learned. Let's summarize all the operation and do a few sums. Now, if you look at the first question that appears on your screen, that is, if A is the matrix so elements are 1, 2, 2, 1, then find f of A. Now, what is f of A? Let me clearly define this first. fx is a polynomial, that is 2x square minus 2x plus 3. Okay? Now, respect to this polynomial, we have to first find the matrix polynomial. How to find the matrix polynomial? If I replace the variable x by matrix A, then this becomes A square minus 2A plus 3. Now, note, 3 is a constant, and these two are matrices. So whenever there is a constant in a corresponding polynomial, we must multiply it by the identity matrix of the same order. Now, A is a matrix of order 2 by 2, so this will be also I2. Now, let us calculate. What is A square? Now, A square means matrix A multiplied by itself. So this will be 1, 2, 2, 1 multiplied by 1, 2, 2, 1 minus 2 into 1, 2, 2, 1, plus 3 into 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, first two matrices when I multiply, I multiply row with column. So 1 into 1, plus 2 into 2, second row with the first column. So 2 into 1, plus 1 into 2, then second, first row, second column, 1 into 2, plus 2 into 1, 2 into 2 plus 1 into 1 minus, now we multiply all the elements, so 2, 4, 4, 2 plus 3, 0, 0, 3. So over here, 2, 2 is a 4 plus 1, 5, now this is 4, this is 4, and this is 5. So first what we did is matrix multiplication, this multiplication of matrix by a matrix. Now over here, 2 into scalar multiplication, 3 into this is scalar multiplication. Now, if you look, there's a plus sign, so we add these two matrices. So 5 plus 3, 8, 4 plus 0, 4, 4 plus 0, 4, 5 plus 3, 8, minus 2, 4, 4, 2. Now, this is matrix subtraction. So we subtract the corresponding element, that is 8 minus 2, 4 minus 4, 4 minus 4, 8 minus 2, and so we get 6. 0, 0, 6. Now that is the answer. So first step was matrix multiplication, then scalar multiplication, then we did matrix addition and matrix subtraction to get to this particular result. Now let's focus on the second question. It says if A equals to alpha 0, 1 and 1 and B equals to 1, 0, 2, 1, okay, and is given A square equals to B, then find the values of alpha. And this is a very important question. This type of question comes in your board examination. Now, first, let us compute what is A square. So, alpha 0, 1, 1, alpha 0, 1, 1 equals to 1, 0, 2, 1. Now, this is the equation. 
Now, if I multiply this equation, alpha into alpha is alpha square, 0 into 1 is 0, 1 into alpha is alpha plus 1 into 1 is 1, then alpha into 0 is 0, 0 into 1 is 0, 1 into 0 is 0 plus 1 into 1 is 1. So this is matrix multiplication and this is equal to 1, 0, 2, 1. Now using equality of matrices, we have learned if two matrices are equal, then all their corresponding elements are equal. So over here, alpha square must be equal to 1 and alpha plus 1 must be equal to 2. So alpha square equal to 1 and alpha plus 1 equal to 2. Alpha square equals to 1 gives us alpha as plus minus 1 and alpha plus 1 equals to 2 gives alpha equals to 1. Now note we have got two different values of alpha in one place plus minus 1, another place equals to alpha, alpha equals to 1. Now in the question it was asked find the value within bracket S of alpha. Students get confused that there must be always multiple value. No, if there is a S within bracket that can be one value or multiple value. In case of matrices, the answer should satisfy both the equation. So alpha plus minus 1, alpha equal to 1. Bo common value is alpha equal to 1, so alpha equals to 1 is your answer because it is the common value of the two equation. One more thing, if you put alpha equal to 1 over here, then 1 plus 1 gives you 2. But if you put minus 1, then minus 1 plus 1 will give you 0 which does not match with this 2. So alpha equal to minus 1 does not satisfy the matrix and hence cannot be the equation. So the answer over here will be alpha equal to 1. Now we will uh, discuss a new topic that is transpose of a matrix. Now, if A is a square matrix, if A is any matrix of order M by N, then transpose of A is a matrix of order N by M, which is obtained by interchanging the rows and columns of A. It is denoted by A transpose, that is A with T at the top or A prime. Any one of the two symbols can be used. Now, let us understand this using an example. A is a matrix, A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, then A transpose will be obtained by interchanging the first row into the first column, so A1, B1, C1, and the second row into the second column, A2, B2, C2. So this is A transpose. Check there are two row and three column, over here there are three row and two columns, the order gets interchanged. So this is A transpose. Now, if I say how to deal with this in everyday life, remember the television screen that you see or the smartphone screen that you use are all pixel matrices. Now, in this matrix, when you use the option to rotate a screen, then what happens is the row becomes a column and a column becomes a row. So this is a practical example of use of transpose in our everyday life. Now, let's focus on proper the properties of the transpose. Yes, ma'am, let's focus on the properties now. Next slide, please. Yes. Now, properties of transpose. The first property that you can see on the screen is A transpose whole transpose equals to A. That is, if I transpose a matrix, row becomes column and column becomes row, then I again transpose it, then it goes back to the original matrix A. So A transpose whole transpose equal to A. Property 2, A plus B whole transpose equals to A transpose plus B transpose. That means Transpose of sum of two matrices equals to sum of their transposes. Third, A minus B whole transpose equal to A transpose minus B transpose. That means transpose of difference of two matrices is equal to difference of their transpose. Fourth, K, where K is any scalar as a real number, then K into A whole transpose equals to K into A transpose. Now understand this, that K is a scalar and so it's not affected by transpose. So we have K into A transpose on the right side. And the last very important property is A into B whole transpose is B transpose into A transpose. Now note the left hand side is AB whole transpose, right side is B transpose into A transpose. Now, this property 5 is called reversal law of transposes where the product is the reorder in which the two matrices are multiplied is reversed after taking transpose. Now based on the concept of transpose, we can now define two more types of matrices 
that is a symmetric matrix and a skew symmetric matrix. Now, what is a symmetric matrix? If capital A is a square matrix such that if A transpose equals to A, then A is called a symmetric matrix. Let us see the example A equals to 1, 2, 2, 4. Now, if I take transpose of this, then the first row becomes the first column 1, 2, the second row becomes the second column 2, 4, and we see there is no change to it, that is A transpose is equal to A. So, this is an example of a symmetric matrix. Now, let us consider an example of a skew symmetric matrix. A skew symmetric matrix is a square matrix in which A transpose must be equal to minus A. So, let us consider an example A equals to 0, 5, minus 5, 0. Now, A transpose equals to, so the first row, first column becomes the first row, the second column becomes the second row. Now, we see that we have minus 5 above and 5 below. So, this is equal to minus of 0, 5, minus 5, 0, and equals to minus of A. So, clearly A transpose equal to minus of A. When A transpose equals to minus of A, then it is called a skew symmetric matrix. Now, all of you note that in the example that I have selected, look at the principal diagonal elements. The principal diagonal elements of a skew symmetric matrix must always be must always be equal to 0. This is an important characteristic of a skew symmetric matrix. So the principal diagonal elements are all 0 and other elements are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. It is as if if you put a mirror on the principal diagonal, if you put a mirror over here, then all the elements on either side of the mirror will be equal in magnitude but only their sign will be different. But whereas for a symmetric matrix, you put a mirror, put a mirror over here, then all the elements on either side will be exactly identical. That is, it will appear as if one is a reflection of the other. Now, let us focus on a few questions based on symmetric and skew symmetric matrices. Next slide, please. Okay, before I start answering the question, let us see the result that is appearing on your screen. That is, if A is a square matrix of order N, then the following results are always true. Number one, A plus A transpose divided by two is a symmetric matrix. A minus A transpose divided by two is always a skew symmetric matrix. That is, if I add a matrix to its own transpose, then the sum divided by two is symmetric, and the difference divided by two is skew symmetric. Now, if you see there's any matrix A, can easily be written as A plus A transpose plus a minus A transpose, because if you take half common, A transpose, A transpose cancels, half into 2A is A itself. So every square matrix A can be expressed as a sum of a symmetric matrix and a skew symmetric matrix. Now we go to the first question. The first question says, show that A plus A transpose is, sym is symmetric if A equals to the square matrix 2, 4, 3, 5. And these are the elements. I have to prove A plus A transpose symmetric. Now, during the examination, take your time and do the steps correctly. Your first step that you should do is calculate A transpose. That is 2, 4, 3, 5. You do this correct, you get your first marking. Next, we calculate A plus A transpose. That is 2, 4, 3, 5 plus this, so which is equal to, now if I add 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, 3 plus 4 is 7, 5 plus 5 is 10. So we get this matrix. Now if we look, if I put a mirror over here, 7 and 7 appear as if they are images of one another, and over here this is a symmetric matrix. Now let's verify this. A plus A transpose whole transpose is equal to 4, 7, 7, 10, whole transpose. So if I transpose this, I get the same matrix, that is A plus A transpose. So A plus A transpose, whole transpose equals to A plus A transpose, and hence A plus A transpose is symmetric. 
Okay, so first what we did, we computed A transpose, then we find the sum A plus A transpose, and then we verify that A plus A transpose whole transpose equals to A plus A transpose itself. This proves that A plus A transpose is symmetric. Now, we refer to the second question. If A equals to 5, A, B, and 0, the four elements are 5, A, B, and 0, and is given A is symmetric, we have to show A equal to B. Now, for this type of sum, always learn the definitions correctly. A is symmetric. This means, since A is symmetric, hence A transpose must be equal to A. Now, what is A transpose? Again, compute A transpose properly. You get your first marking for computing A transpose. So, 5 A B 0. A is 5, A is 0. Now, these two matrices are equal. So from the concept of equality of matrices, the corresponding elements must be the same. So if I equate this two, or if I equate this two element, then we get A equals to B. This completes the proof. So this type of questions are for two mark questions that you get in examination. So computing a transpose and then finding the proof are the two important things you should focus on when you're solving this type of questions in your examination. Now, using this concept of transpose, we have, let's see what we have covered. First, we had covered all the types of matrices, then operations, then sums on operations. Then we did transpose, we defined symmetric, we defined skew symmetric matrix. Then we did sums on properties of symmetric and skew symmetric matrix. Now we have come to the last and the most important segment of this class, that is elementary operations. So before starting the elementary operation, we have someone in our uh, phone line. Uh, Koel Moitro is calling us. Yeah, Koel, tell us. Uh, Ma'am, my question is, what is null matrix? What is null matrix? I think uh, oh, sir has given the yes, answer. Yes, I have given the example. Null matrix is a matrix where all the corresponding elements are zero. That is, it can be a rectangular matrix where all the elements are zero. It can be a square matrix where all the elements are zero. It can be a column matrix or it can be a row matrix. If all the elements are zero, it's a null matrix or it's also called a zero matrix. Now, we proceed to elementary, elementary operations. operations. Now, first, I will write a four matrices on the board. When I'm writing it, go through the matrices and try to find how are these matrices connected with each other. Now, A is a matrix whose elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. B is a matrix whose elements are 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. C is a matrix whose elements are 2, 4, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And D is a matrix 5, 7, 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Observe these matrices carefully. Now, if you look at A and B, I'm sure by now you have understood what, how are they connected. Yes, the two rows have been interchanged from the original matrix. So what I have done over here is interchanging R1 and R2. So the first elementary operation is interchange of two row or two columns in, of a matrix. So if I interchange two row or two columns of a matrix, then that is a elementary operation this is the first type operation now I move to the second type if you look at A and matrix C now what is the change if you observe row 2 row 3 no change but all the elements over here and look at all the elements over here 1 into 2 is 2 2 into 2 is 4 3 into 2 is 6 that means the operation is R1 changes to 2 into R1 all the elements of R1 are have been multiplied by 2 that means multiplying the elements of a row by a non-zero scalar quantity k 
is an elementary operation. It can be a row or it can be a column. Now, A and D, if you check, then the elements of the first row are obtained by adding the elements of the first over here. So, 1 plus 4 gives you 5, 2 plus 5 gives you 7, 3 plus 6 gives you 9. So that means, over here the operation is R1 changes to R1 plus R2. That means, all the elements of R2 have been actually multiplied by 1 and then added to the elements of R1. It is very important, please note, that when you write this type of operation, the row that you change, the ele that element will come first. If R1 changes, R1 will come first followed by the second row or the third row whose elements you are adding to the elements of R1. So, we have discussed all the three types of elementary operation, that is interchange of two row or column. Second is multiplying the elements of a row by a scalar quantity k, where k is not equal to zero. And third, the addition to the elements of any row or column, the corresponding elements of any other row or column multiplied by any non-zero real number k. Now, based on this constant elementary operation, let us define equivalent matrices. Now, if you see A and B, A and C, A and D, then the matrices B, C and D has been obtained by applying some elementary operation on A. Now, then how are they related to each other? B is equivalent to A, C is equivalent to A, and D is equivalent to A. That is, if a matrix B is obtained by applying finite number of elementary operation on, on matrix A, then B is said to be equivalent to A, and we denote it as a equivalent B, A equivalent C, and A equivalent D. This is the concept of equivalent matrices. Now we define invertible matrix. So in between them yes. uh, we have a call sure. and uh, Shaptum uh, Singh is calling from Kanpur. Shaptum, we can hear you. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ma'am, my question is what is diagonal matrix? What is diagonal matrix? Okay, Shabtum, so I has I, already described it. Yes, I have explained it when it is classed types of matrices. Now, a matrix in which all the non-diagonal elements are 0 is a diagonal matrix. For example, say 4, 0, 0, 0, 5, 0, 0, 0, 7. Now, all the non-diagonal elements are 0, then such a matrix is called a diagonal matrix. Now, we define invertible matrix. A matrix A is said to be invertible if there exists a matrix B such that A into B equals to I equals to B into A. Now, A is a square matrix such that there exists another matrix B. If it exists, then A into B equals to I equals to B into A and satisfies this condition then B is called inverse of matrix A, and B is written as A inverse. Now, such a matrix B may exist. If it exists, then A is invertible. If such a matrix does not exist, then A is not invertible. We have to calculate and see whether it exists or it doesn't exist. Now, so the here qu comes, I think, another question. That is, uh, is it possible to find the inverse of a rectangular matrix? Yes, ma'am. This is a very important question. Thank you for the question, ma'am. Inverse of a rectangular matrix. Now, students often, in the moment they get a matrix, start to compute the inverse. But note that define that A must be a square matrix. Now, why? The condition for invertible mix matrix is that the product AB must be equal to I, must be equal to B into A. That is, A into B must be equal to B into A. Now, from the concept of matrix multiplication, multiplication of a matrix by a matrix, right at the beginning of the class today, I explained that the order is very important for matrix multiplication. The product AB and BA, both multiplication is only possible if they are square matrices, and at the same time, because it's not only whether product is possible or not, they also must be equal. That is, the corresponding elements of the product AB and the product BA must be equal. This is only possible if both the matrices A and B are square matrices and not rectangular matrix. So, inverse of a rectangular matrix does not exist. Now, using the concept of elementary operation and invertible matrix, we will now solve 
a question which comes for six marks in your IS examination that is computing inverse of a matrix using elementary operations. The first question is that a matrix is given to you whose elements are 3, 10, 2 and 7. Let A equals to 3, 10, 2, 7. This is the matrix. Now, if you are op using elementary operation, remember three things. Point one, you must apply same operation on both sides. Okay, the operation that you are applying on the left should be also applied on the right. Second, when you are doing elementary operation, either apply elementary row operation throughout the sum or apply elementary column operation throughout the sum. Do not mix them up. We often see students have applied two steps. They apply row operation, then they start with column operation. That is not allowed and that is not permissible. So either apply row or apply column operations. Apply both the operations on both sides. If you are using row operation, then you will write A equals to IA. And if you are using column operation, then you will write A equals to AI. Now, after applying, writing this, we write down the matrix 3, 10, 2, 7, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, into A. Now, the whole objective is that to obtain a matrix B over here such that the product will be equal to identity. So we want to convert this left hand side matrix into identity. What is identity? 1, 0, hmm. 0, 1. So the main objective is to bring 1 over here and 0 below. So the first operation to get 1 over here, I'm applying R1 changes R1 minus R2. So 3 minus 2, 1. 10 minus 7 is 3. The second row remains as it is. Now. Don't forget, if you do any operation on the left side, the same operation will be on the right side. Mm. So 1 minus 0, 1. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 0, 1. So this is the first step. We obtained 1. Now, using this 1 that we have obtained, we want to get 0 over here. How to do it? If I sub multiply this 1 by 2 and subtract, then 2 minus 2 into 1 will give me 0. So my second operation is R2 changes. R2 minus 2 R1. Okay. So the first row remains as it is, 2 minus 2 into 1, 0, 7 minus 2 into 3, 2 into 3 is 6, 7 minus 6 is 1, so 1 minus 1, a 0 minus 2 into 1 is minus 2, 1 minus 2 into minus 1, that is plus 2, so 1 plus 2 is 3. So now it's time to give the assignments to the students. Okay. Now you, just one step left, using this one you get 0 over here. So the operation will be R1 changes, R1 minus 3, R2, so 1, 0, 0, 1. So 1 minus 3 into 2 is over here 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. Now minus 3 into 3 is minus 9, minus 9, minus 1 will be minus 10, minus 2, 3. So clearly, I equals to B into A, therefore, B equals to A inverse. That is, 7 minus 10 minus 2 and 3 is the EB, in, that's inverse of matrix A. This okay. is how applying elementary operation, mm. we can find inverse of a matrix. There are two other questions given over here. Now remember, while finding inverse of a matrix, say you get 2, 0 in a row or 2, 0 in a column, then inverse of such a matrix does not exist. Okay, if, sir, please, uh, now okay? it's time to give the assignment. Sure, ma'am. Now we move to the assignment. The first question is find a matrix A such that 2A plus 3X equals to 5B, where A and B are given. Second question, if A equals to 1, 2, 2, 1, then show that A square minus 3A equals to 2 into A. Third question, if A equals to 3, 1, 7, 5, Find the values of x and y such that a square plus x into i2 equals to y into n. i2 is the identity matrix of order 2. And finally, two questions are inverse are given. Now, why I just make a note that when I'm getting 1, 0, 0, when it is using 3 cross 3 order matrix, then getting 1, 0, 0, you get your first marking. Then when you obtain, when if you obtain this by applying elementary operation, you get your first marking. Then when you apply elementary operation on the second hmm. row, you obtain 0, 1, 0, you get your second marking. And then finally, 
when you apply elementary operation on the third door to get okay. 0, 0, 1, and at the same time, write A inverse correctly, you get the I final think, so marking. There uh, should not be much uh, questions and doubts uh, to the students. You have such, uh, uh, descriptively, you have uh, uh, answered all the questions. And uh, now it's time to conclude the program. Okay, and uh, tomorrow there will be the ICC Maths uh, program from 12 to 1 p.m. In equations will be the topic. Our Ajdupur team today, Bangladeshi classroom. Tomorrow, we will know. Today, Vishay, Dasham Srini, and Dadus Srini. Jono, Dadus Srini. Shall I compare the English? Today, Vishay, and Dasham Srini. Jono, Shaotali Anat. Today, Alochanar Vishay Thakbe. Lockdown in classroom. Today, Porjon the Shabkhobar Jono. Apna Dechok Thakshudh Matra Vipyanande.